Let me tell you what's gonna happen. You'll probably threaten to resign, but in the end, I will be released. The reason I'll be released is the same reason you think I'll be convicted. I do rub shoulders with some of the most vile, sadistic men calling themselves leaders today. The President of the United States. Sometimes it's embarrassing to have his fingerprints on the guns. What's going to happen next? What is the DOJ going to do? What is the FBI going to do when it comes to James Comer? And where does the Biden crime family go next? Joe Biden still saying the Hunter's the smartest guy I know. And Joe Biden just moments ago saying that he's really proud of his son. He's very, very proud of Hunter. Can we play that clip one more time? Just a reminder, his son just pled guilty, even though the charges were, were, were literally nothing, touching him with a feather. He still pled guilty to these things. And Joe Biden says he's very proud of his son for pleading guilty. Watch. I'm very proud of my son. Hmm. I know somebody who's not very proud of Hunter Biden. I know somebody who is uh, a bewildered, shocked, amazed, and uh, blown away, I think, in the, in, the, in the very literal sense of the term, uh, if you were to read his Truth Social feed, uh, because he knows what should really be happening here with these kind of offenses. That man's name is Cash Patel. That man is a fighter. That man is somebody who has been a federal prosecutor, and that man will shed, shed some true light on this case right now. Cash Patel joins the show. Uh, Cash, thank you for being on the program. Uh, you've been you've been snapping on through social. We're going to put some of your truths up here on screen, but I just want to hand it over to you, man. You're the one who's been the federal prosecutor. What I really want to talk about is what should have happened here. Like for the next 100,000 Americans that are charged with tax crimes or gun crimes, like what would you have expected to happen? Hey, Benny, it's great to be with you. And I'll just tell you what does happen. Not only was I a national security prosecutor, but I was a federal public defender in the Southern District of Florida. I handled hundreds of these gun charges hundreds and they were all tied to a narcotics related issue and the average sentence for my indigent clients who are minorities was three to five years in federal prison flat out and why because congress rightly slow legislated anyone who has a drug addiction or gambles with narcotics and possesses a firearm should be off the streets yeah. that's not logic that's just simple math and so when you have the disparate treatment between minorities and then you bring in, oh, let's say a white son of a white president of a white attorney general. And I'm not saying this is about race. I bring that up because of the irony of this entire situation. Where is the ACLU and the liberals who are raging to get gun crimes sentences reduced mm -hmm. during the Trump administration, which we actually did for minorities, by the way, separate issue? versus how Joe Biden's son was treated. And I don't care if uh, fathers are proud of his son. Of course, every father is going to say that. I'm not gonna knock Joe Biden for that. But when you have guys like Representative Dan Goldman, AKA Schiff Jr. coming out and saying the same thing, like he's, they're, they're proud that Hunter Biden took responsibility. No, he didn't take responsibility. Remember, this is a key distinction. Hunter Biden will never be charged with a federal gun offense, ever. He got pretrial diversion. The only person that can authorize that in this instance is the attorney general. My clients got no pretrial diversion and they cooked the books to get it. The only way you get pretrial diversion is you have no criminal history, no more criminal culpability, and you are an actual drug addict. Okay, so which is it, Hunter? You're a drug addict now? Is that what you're admitting to the world? Because you can't get it retroactively under the law and say, I was a drug addict five years ago, Please give me this sweetheart deal. You can't have it both ways. But if you're in Joe Biden's political justice system and you're his kid, you can have it every way. So, yeah. And I mean, the, don't look too far into the Hunter Biden laptop. You'll realize he did have it every, every other way. And uh, maybe human sex trafficking is something he should be charged with next. Here at the DOJ, at your DOJ, mm -hmm. the place where you work. 
The laws that confined and constrained you, we'll pop them on screen here for pre-trial diversion. We went we went and hunted a little bit on the yeah, DLP website. And what do you know here? Number three, accused of an offense involving brandishing the use of a firearm. Well, hot damn cash. I've seen Hunter Biden brandish a firearm while while being uh, strung out on crack. I mean, in the same video, he, uh, he's weighing his crack. Yeah. So wh what the hell? I mean, here's the here's the DOJ website. Okay, this ain't this ain't me. This ain't you. This ain't True Social. This is the Department of Justice website. Look, you, you, no one's talking about this, and this is. I'm glad you brought it up. This is not the only DOJ thing they violated. Shall exclude any individual accused of offense involving brandishing a firearm. Shall, in legal terminology, is must. It's not arbitrary or up to the person behind the microscope. It is must. So not only did they violate their own policy here when it's convenient to them, they violated the Ashcroft memo. The Ashcroft memo has guided prosecutors for more than two decades. It simply states, and it's still in effect today, a federal prosecutor must bring the highest charge that they can prosecute an individual with when they decide to charge it. The plea bargain process is later and separate. So the fact that I believe they violated the Ashcroft memo because they gave him Hunter a pass on the bribery, on the other gun charges, on the possible sex trafficking charges, on the possible disgusting sexual uh, relations he had with maybe underage women and others. And all of those crimes related to the laptop itself and other narcotics issues, they didn't charge him. They violated the Ashcroft memo. And I know, I'm glad you, you know, it's ironic that you brought this up to me because I used to take that I used to get that shoved in my face when I asked for pretrial diversion for indigent defendants who had no money and were minorities and brandished a gun. The federal government would be like, no, look at our policy. It says, no, your guy waved a gun. Five years. Bye. Wow. Oh, so we just make exceptions when it's, you know, the, the son of Joe Biden. The two tier system of justice is it's tragically in America here to stay unless Congress acts and. You know, I'm quite frankly sick and tired of congressional leadership failing to cure this evil. Yeah, the top of the show, the top of the show, we talk about the Washington generals and how, like, you know, we're just we're just the foil. Like, the, 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 there's never any fight ever put up against the Harlem Globetrotters. They just dunk on us and make us look like idiots every mm -hmm. single time. And I suppose this is my legal question for you today. We can rant and rave and scream, two-tiered mm -hmm. justice. They don't care if we call them names. They don't care if we call them out on this. They're still going to get the result that they want, which is Hunter Biden being baptized of all sins, right? He's a new man. Is he? And that's my question for you. Could a Republican administration uh, look into the sex crimes? Could they look into FARA violations? Fair violations. Could they look into or crack open the laptop again, or has it been officially unplugged? No, of course they can. And it just matters with the statute of limitations on the certain crimes, whether it's five years, 10 years, or what have you. The more severe the crime, the longer the statute of limitations goes. So they could look at those offenses, but that wouldn't happen until the earliest, January 2025, which is why Congress needs to be doing all the work. Subpoena everybody John Durham forgot to subpoena. Subpoena hunter biden and when he says i'm going to take the fifth you know what you do you use the rules the january 6th committee taught us about the power of congressional subpoenas you force feed him immunity and then he cannot hide anymore and you put him on blast for the world to see because that's the only accountability you're going to get that is firsthand information of either a hunter biden lying under oath or copping to everything because he was immune. And then the people will know at the polls in 2024 that the election was rigged multiple times by Joe Biden's administration. But the Republicans in Congress, they don't want to exert this type of leadership. They don't want to take the money from the FBI and DOJ. And I'm sick and tired of them saying, oh, they, just, they gave us a redacted document. What, were you born last night? Of course they gave you a redacted document because you spent 47 days writing nice letters and bedtime notes to say, pretty please give me this document. And then when they violated a congressional subpoena, you didn't refer them to DOJ. You didn't hold them in contempt. You didn't take their money. You wrote another letter. It's outrageous. You know, I'm the biggest cheerleaders for these guys in Congress. And I've told them, call me if you need help. I ran Russiagate. I'll do it for free. But none of these people want to do the actual work of taking the Democrats to the max. And if they don't do that, this will not be cured by 2024. I mean, we have a long way to go before President Trump is reelected again. And a lot more hurt is coming for this country if you just think they're going to stop now because they got Hunter 
uh, dealt with. This is just a tragic confluence of events. And I'm so disappointed in Republican leadership in Congress right now. I can't even begin to tell you. Cash, you've been on the show like three dozen times. I love you, man. Like, I've never seen this fired up. I mean, I've never seen you this like pissed off. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, it's not even, so obviously, but like it's not real, a Democrat I, or Republican thing, right? Like yeah. I was in for 16 years. Like, how hard is it to promise people the truth and deliver on it? If you're if you're privileged to serve in government and you're privileged to be elected to serve in government, then get off the airwaves and stop being on primetime TV and giving me the same empty epithet over and over again. I know there's a two tier system of justice. I proved it years ago. What are you doing to fix it? Why are you going to Speaker McCarthy to say I'm not giving Chris Ray $10 million for his G5 that the taxpayers pay for or his 10 Cadillac Escapade fleet? We're going to take those toys away, too. When are you going to go do that? What are they going to say? We're not in power anymore. I mean, it's unbelievable what I had to go through and dozens, if not thousands of other Americans who received congressional subpoenas, grand jury subpoenas. My legal bills are in the 300 plus thousand range. I'm not saying the Republicans should punish people by doing that, but they did it and they got their information and false narrative out. We have the truth on our side and we don't want to take it to the mats for these people. So in a short time, I'm just going to start blasting Republicans by name. I don't really care anymore. Good for you. I do want to try as hard as we can on this program. And you've always been good with this, but like projecting what could what could happen next if we got our act together. So you're saying mm -hmm. that there could be a special counsel. You could put in a Republican administration. Mm -hmm. 2025 seems like an eternity. But what can you you know, what, what can you do? Uh, you could have actually a special counsel look into this. You could actually have a special counsel appointed. This does not unplug Hunter Biden's laptop forever. He could still be culpable for sex trafficking and FARA yeah. violations. He could still be culpable for all of the numerous Marco Polo crimes. I think there's hundreds of them, maybe 600 mm -hmm. uh, crimes and statutes. That Those don't all go away bye-bye overnight. I, and am I hearing that correctly? Because I am not the legal professional. Yeah, and look, not only do those not go away overnight, it's an extension of who is investigating Hunter Biden. Remember, we're talking about the corrupt government gangsters that allowed this due process to be destroyed and a two-tier system of justice created. The same architects from Russiagate, Lisa Monaco, John Carlin, Comey's disciple, McCabe, Peter Strzok, all their, all their disciples are all running these investigations and running these rigged operations. So if Congress would simply subpoena everybody that John Durham said he didn't subpoena for some reason, which is a whole nother story as to why you wouldn't subpoena conspirators in a criminal case that you're investigating. I've never heard of a prosecutor doing that. Congress locks them in to testify. And when they say, I'm going to take the fifth, you force feed them immunity and they got to come in. And then there is no out. And then when they lie under oath, which they will do because they do it because they think they will never get caught or nothing will happen to them. The conspiracy then statute tolls and it keeps going. This is how you keep it connected to 2024. What do you think Andy McCabe, James Comey, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Charles Dolan, Danchenko, and all these other people are going to say under oath? What are they going to get their stories together? No, they have too big of an ego to ever think that they did any wrong. But at the end of the day, the ironic thing is they destroyed our system of justice. And America's catching on, which is the good part. But I think America's getting equally frustrated with the lack of accountability from Congress. We fought tooth and nail to get the Republican majority. They're delivering on some things. Don't get me wrong. I've been their champion when they do. But I'll also call them out when they fail. And what are we in the summer of 2023 already? I haven't. Oh, we're not going to impeach Chris Ray now because why? He gave you a document that was 50 percent redacted. So you go on TV and complain that you didn't know he was going to give you a document that was 50 percent redacted. Where are the audio recordings? Why don't you have them? Your constitutional oversight mandate requires you to get them and you owe them to us, the American people. So the American people, it seems, were owed a Republican Party that is more than the Washington generals. That is more than just the the heels, the stooges, mm -hmm. the, the goofs mm -hmm. to get dunked on. And hopefully we'll get that. I do have a mm -hmm. I do have a question for you because I'm I'm. Legitimately curious, Cash. I want to know. It's and you, you know Donald Trump very, very well. Donald Trump said, because you'd be in you'd be in jail to Hillary Clinton. The world loved it. Probably the most famous 
line ever said in any presidential debate ever. I think it's inarguable. Donald Trump knew. We went through the entire phone call with Zelensky. Yeah. We went through, we read the whole thing on air a couple of days ago. Donald Trump knew about all of this. Clearly. He doesn't need to tell me. He knew. He knew about uh, Burisma. He knew about Hunter. He knew about Joe. He knew about Ukraine. Trump knew. You can see it. You can read it. Why wasn't there a special counsel uh, put in place to look into the Bidens? Was it, maybe you could, I mean, it's just an open question. That's yeah. my, ultimately yeah. my question. Like, what? Like, why not? Like, like you you all clearly knew that these people were corrupt as hell. Absolutely. And look, like I talk about in Government Gangsters, it's not just a Republican or Democrat thing. These people are institutionalists. Bill Barr, Rod Rosenstein, Chris Ray, Mark Esper, Gina Haspel. Those are all Republicans and Republican appointees. And the reason it's a confluence of events that sort of happened. Donald Trump was never in government and people in government were like, these are career guys. They're going to help us uphold the law and right the ship. So he trusted them. You can't really fault him for that. Some of these people, and the problem is they all knew. They all knew the Russiagate scam had happened and was on their watch and they had the ability, Bill Barr specifically could have had the ability to issue special counsels, speed up the Hunter Biden probe, a five-year investigation for two misdemeanor yeah. tax frauds. Are you kidding me? When does that ever happen in what country? Well, 2023 America. So the problem was personnel, um, but I don't lay it at, at, at Donald Trump's feet entirely because he trusted the government to do the work. And now the American public knows when he goes back in, it has to be a warrior squad of grade A Americans who don't care about the left or the right, but care about the truth. And prosecuting criminals in government as much as we prosecute criminals outside of government. And Benny, you know this, you're around. We got the bench, it's there. This next go around, we just got to pick from them and not from the corrupt uh, swamp monsters in and around DC. Yeah, I'll give you a perfect example. Russiagate. Gina Haspel was CIA station chief when Russiagate launched. On her watch, which needed her authorization, she was CIA station chief in London. Rod Rosenstein covered up the Russiagate scandal and prevented Devin Nunes and I investigation from going forward by blocking congressional subpoenas. Chris Ray then became the director of the FBI and withheld documentation on Russiagate. Do you know where Gina Haspel and Rod Rosenstein now work? At Chris Ray's former law firm where he was a named partner. It is not a coincidence. And Bill Barr is on the sidelines on his precious book tour to make oodles of money at the expense of his former bar. Hey, why did you take the job in the first place? It's not like these guys didn't know for three years who Donald Trump was. They took it to protect the institution and in doing so destroy America's faith in our constitutional republic. They are the biggest enemies of the state, not the ones I manhunted for years. Man, I mean, you've seen a lot of that. Tucker's been going hard against Pompeo and against sort of the grifters inside yeah. of the administration who were there as like a psyop, who were there because being president's a very busy job. Trump can't micromanage everything. Yeah. And they were just there to like essentially uh, betray him at every turn. And now that's what you're now that's what you're seeing. But ultimately, it's not about Trump. It was about betraying us. Like us, the American people, at the very least, wanted Trump to have a fair shot at a first administration, like a first term mm -hmm. to see what the guy could do. And then, of course, we have the ability to hold him into account if we don't like what he did. But I feel like we didn't even get a Trump first term because he was just kneecapped at every turn by the people working in his administration, as you just detailed. Uh, it would sure be nice to just see what a real Donald Trump term would look like uh, without the kneecapping. It sure would be yeah. nice to have seen Bill Barr. Uh, investigate Hunter Biden. This, this, all these investigations happened while Bill Barr was in charge of the DOJ. No, you're right. And 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 that's, you know, you know me, I'm not a big guy uh, into writing, but that's what forced me to write Government Gangsters, my new book, which is on pre-sale at governmentgangsters.com. Donald Trump called it the roadmap to winning in 2024. And the deep state prevented its release, forget this, Benny, nine months. The government failed to release my manuscript for nine months. I sued them in federal court last month and I won and forced the release and forced it to go to print. Why do you think these guys didn't want this book to come out? And today, for the first time ever, there's an article with an excerpt from chapter three of my book about the judicial process. What we've been talking about, it's all it's it's tragic. But the good thing is it's solvable. And I give you the solutions agency by agency, department by department, 
what congressional levers to pull, what executive branch levers to pull, how we fix the DOJ, FBI, CIA, DOD, how we remove the weaponization, how we take out the woke industry, and how we return government to serving for the American people. Um, but you can order it now, governmentgangsters.com. It's up. It'll be out this summer, finally. And um, I'll get you the link to that uh, three chapter three. Your audience can uh, check it out. It's over on Gateway Pundit. Um, just put up an article on it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Also, fightwithcash.com and follow Cash on Truth Social, where he's been spitting fire. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to go to the experts. You got to go to people that actually have solutions here, uh, as Cash was talking about, not just not just making sound bites on cable news, but like actual solution. And Cash yeah. Patel is one of them. Thank you so much, sir. For being Thanks, here. Benny. Appreciate Godspeed. it. Godspeed.